So if you guys are new to the channel, my name's Todd, and this is Unwrecked, where I fix up a lot of normal cars, and sometimes I get some deals on some really good cars. So what's going on right now is, there is the old Grand Prix door. I called the guy, he was real nice about it, he was like, oh, just come get it. And I was like, well, you, you know, you paid me for it, and he's like, don't worry about it. And I said, I'll tell you what. I'll get the parts I need out of the door and I'll bring the door back so you, you can put it in the scrap pile. And I'm getting a phone call. Hello, this is Vincent from Card Services. Go f Anyways, if you didn't notice, the Lancer's gone. Um, it's not actually gone. It's at the Enhanced Inspection Station right now. It's supposed to leave tomorrow. I have so much to do tomorrow, I just decided to take off of work. Uh... I need to move the Grand Prix over to the lift so I have room over here to park something there. And not my car either. Hey, you peed a little. Hey, come clean this up. I ain't doing it. So I'm not putting this up on the lift right now. We will be finishing this before whatever comes into this space. But... Um, I gotta fix the bumper, cooler lines, wheel bearing, and rotors on the front, and um, then we'll see, might possibly have to do an intake gasket, so, a lower intake gasket. We'll find out, I, I just washed it down again, I didn't know if I had it cleaned enough or whatnot, I'm pretty sure it's still leaking, so we might be doing that on this. Um, got the truck ready, we'll get the trailer tomorrow, we'll see you guys in the morning. Hello! Hello! It's the next day. Let's go get ourselves a new project. Yeah! Oh yeah, in other news, it hasn't rained all day. So it's 8 o'clock in the morning. So it hasn't rained since yesterday. That's like a long streak. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, you can never be too prepared to go to Copart. So, I have my lockout kit in case the doors lock on me. Um, I got new products here. Um, that is an air pump that it's from a do. <laughs> I know, remember what happened last time. This is a new code reader that I need to do, do a comparison on. And then I got my jumper pack. So like everything and then my camera gear. So let's hit the road. I'm ready to see this thing. You guys excited?
So while I'm here at Copart, I get to test out my new air pump. Okay, a do sent me this, and it is heavy duty. Okay, I have one other one from Harbor Freight. It's comparable, but this one I think puts out more air. I'm gonna be honest with you. I've tested it. It comes with more stuff. You get the airline, which is longer than the Harbor Freight one. You get a very long cord. It has an airline built onto it. Only thing I don't like is they could have made this bag bigger. So here it is. It's a dual piston pump. Uh, pretty sure it works better than the Harbor Freight one. One other thing I really like about it is it comes with this. In case you don't have a cigarette outlet to use, you can plug it into this and hook it to a battery. So that's nifty. And this is, like I said, about the same price point as the Harbor Freight one. So I'm gonna use it on my trailer tires because, well, I'd show you, but there's a car on there. The trailer tires are a little low. All right, so it's pretty noisy here from everybody loading, but that tire does not look like it has enough air in it. Neither does this one. I wanted to show you, you know, what it sounded like, but it's still loud here. I don't even know if I can show you. Not bad. And actually, that tire has about 60 PSI in it, so it's good. As I suspected, it's showing about 15 PSI. It has a, a light on the end of it too, accessory light, which is on this side. You know what, I'll be honest with you. It is taking a lot longer than I thought it would. I don't know that it's any better than the Harbor Freight one. I'd say it's maybe equal. So the Harbor Freight one's a little bit cheaper and it's a single piston. I was just talking this thing up because it does pump up pretty fast to like 30 PSI, but anything over that takes a long time. And so does the Harbor Freight one. So neither one of them are really fast in that, that point or that perspective. Now, I will get more in depth in this. I know, it doesn't look bad at first sight, but we're gonna get more into that. 
I have to take the paperwork out and the Mitsubishi is leaving. That's why it's not here. I'm going to meet the kid right now and uh, when I come back, then we'll get more into what's going on on this Infinity. The kid's running a little bit late, so I came back home here after taking my trailer back to Jerry's. Um, we'll go over some things right now. Uh, one thing I want to do is I'm going to hook this code reader up to it, which I need to do a review on. I'm going to do a comparison between this one and the really good one I got. This one is very comparable to it. The one I really like, this one is better priced. So we'll go over that here in a little bit. This thing has more damage than the eye can see. I can tell you that right now. First look at it. You're like, oh, bumper, fender, headlight. Like, the hood's not bent. Like, it's not bad. Well, it's worse than it looks. I can tell you that. I don't know how bad it is until I get it tore down but it's worse than it looks. This headlight alone, these headlights are self-leveling. They have motors that make them turn left to right when you go around turns, and they're HID. So are the fog lights, which this one still works even though it has water in it. So we're gonna try to salvage that one. <laughs> we're gonna try to save it, okay? But uh, we need a bumper, obviously. We need a headlight. Fender, it does not look savable, but <laughs> Once I get it unbolted, we'll see. Might be able to save it. I, I do not know. But <laughs> we could at least put a valiant effort into trying to save that thing anyways. If you went with a factory headlight, I looked up prices. This headlight is like $1,500. <laughs> I found a used one. It's like just under $300. So that's probably the route we're going to go. But bumpers aren't bad. Fenders are $200. That's why I might try to save that one. First thing I want to show you is this fender line right here. As you can see, the gap is perfect, okay? So this fender is actually in the right position right now. No other damage on the car, like behind the front end. So I'm not even going to go into that. Now you start looking at it. The fender's sitting in the right spot, but look how gapped the hood is. And now it's not down, obviously, but that is a huge gap. Although... The hood is not damaged. It's not bent. There's no dents or nothing in it. So looking at this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit here and tell you that this is the same exact damage that Ashley's Camaro had. And what happened to her car is somebody hit it from the side and it pushed the rebar along with the frame rails over. So anyways, it got hit there. Knocked everything to the driver's side, which is why the hood latch doesn't line up. But that's also why the hood has such a big gap over here. Because the hood was latched and it took the hood with it whenever it got hit. So on top of that, look at our gaps over here. Now if we were to shut that hood, there would be no gap. Uh, the fender, look how far it overlays the rim so the whole front end is shifted to the driver's side also there's absolutely no gap here and the it actually just wore the paint off the very edge of the door right here another expensive thing going on on this is this has a pearl white paint job you have to mix twice as much paint whenever you do a pearl paint job because you have to put more layers on <laughs> you have to lay your base your what is a base coat your color coat and your pearl coat and then clear coat it so that front bumper was painted before i can tell you that looking at it because look at the fog light right there and you can see some overspray on the uh front shields and stuff there but until we tear this front end apart we aren't going to know exactly what damage we're dealing with here under the hood uh, the mount for the intake right here is busted off the core support. Um, I'm sure the core support is busted. This is a composite piece here, so I'm sure it's busted. We might be able to save it. I don't know. It's all in one piece. Um, also, the radiator fan mounts um, broke, but it's all in one piece. It just the tabs busted off. So we'll do a repair job on this, get that fixed. I'm not replacing everything. This thing has high miles on it. Um, 
And if you looked at this thing from the factory, uh, normally when you looked under the hood, all you saw was plastic. There's a plastic cover that goes here, one that goes across here, one that goes across here. The only thing I really like in what Nissan has right is how they present this intake. Like, like the plastic cover and still showing the intake runner on it looks fantastic to me. And I hate that people are covering up everything in the engine bay. I mean, I know it keeps it cleaner, but I, I just hate that. I like to see an engine when I look under there. I don't want to see plastic. So on the inside, we have several issues too. I think one was my own problem. That floor over there was soaked. Now I got to looking at it. I opened the passenger side door and you could see where it ran through the door seal over there at like the very edge of the corner. Um, these are all power seats. Yes, leather's coming off a little bit right here, but all in all in very good shape for the year. I've seen worse infinities. Um, everything's power, power tilt, power seat, power fart blocker. It, it's got power everything, but the motor is working to move the seat front forward and backwards, but it ain't going anywhere. It works. Everything else works. Just this motor. So. I'm actually going to remove the seat and diagnose it. Hopefully, this is something that I can fix uh, within reason. It's, to me, it sounds like a gear stripped. It sounds like the motor's running and the gear is just stripped and it's just running inside it. Um, but yeah, the interior is phenomenal in this thing. It's got the Bose stereo and it just, everything is so freaking nice. But this brings me to the code reader. This is a launch CRP129E. It says it right there on the back of it. But this is battery power, it has its own battery power. So hit the power button up here and it's gonna load up. Now let me go grab my other one and we'll compare them side by side. Okay, now here's the one they gave me before. This one's 300 some dollars. I do is really like this one. This is the 429C, okay? Now, these things are very similar. And the one thing that both of these have that I really love and what I recommend, if you're gonna get a code reader, get one that at least has this feature, is they have Wi-Fi connectability. So, both of them are connected to my Wi-Fi, so they have internet. So they upgrade on their own. Like you got to upgrade software, you just hit it and it connects and upgrades. You don't have to mess with your computer or nothing. This one is simply all touchscreen. This one is touchscreen plus has controls on it. And like I said, this one's a little bit more money. This one's in $200 range. This one's uh, in $300 range. Uh, big differences on this one. This one being cheaper has less reset functions okay so you can do a you can do a brake reset oil reset uh, your steering angle sensor uh, electronic throttle relearn and uh, tire pressure monitor system reset that that's all you get on that one this is the pricier one and it has all of that plus uh, it has the brake bleeding feature which what that does is runs your ABS motor to help you bleed your brakes um, there's battery reset there um, I don't know what all these are I'll be honest with you gear learn uh, the e-mobilizer which helps you program keys injectors where you test your injectors uh, this has to do with diesels um, I don't, DPF reg okay I don't I don't honestly know what that is but that's for diesels <laughs> I know but Yes, this one this one has less reset features, but it does pretty much almost everything that this one does. Um, where I do like this one more, but I really like this one too. Also, the really nice thing, and also why I recommend you get one that has Wi-Fi connectability, is if you have problems or software problems with it, you can go into their help feature and send reports and 
they will find a correction for it and update the software or they can answer any questions you have or whatever. There's actually support on there, online su support. These code readers for beginners are, are definitely a recommend for me. Like if you're getting into stuff like this, working on cars, you need a good code reader. Both of these will read pretty much every code you have. Transmission, engine, ABS sensors, your airbags, both of these can read those. So for the 129E, this is definitely, this is a yes for me. If you wanna buy a code reader, this is a good one to get. And it's at a better price point. I told him, I said, I really like this one here, but I said, I can hardly see anybody paying 300 to buy a code reader for their first one. This one's a little bit better range. Um, I'll put the price on the screen. I'll have a link in the description for this if you're interested in it. Uh, I'm going to hook it up to the Infinity now, and we're going to see how it works. <laughs> well, it's not detecting this vehicle. So I'm going to manually enter the VIN in and see how this works out. All right, so I manually entered the VIN in, and it detected it. 2007 Infinity M45. So we're going to do a vehicle scan on it. And this does a full system scan right off the bat. Okay, so now after it does this full report, you can email this to yourself. And uh, let's see what we have here. Battery voltage, not normal. Uh, rate sensor, RAS circuit. Um, we'll have to look more into those. I'm not going to look right now. Transmission, what do we got underneath it? M mode switch. Manual mode switch? I don't know. We'll look into all this, but... As of right now, like I said, I just wanted to show you that this code reader is actually a pretty good deal for uh, what you're paying for. So like, I, I really wanted to be cool like Sean and, and put all the windows down or up with the remote, but <laughs> the battery's dead in the remote. You have to actually stick it in the slot and then hit the push button <laughs> to start it. So I can't do that. But this car does it and everything else. It even wipes your ass for you. This thing's JDM as f boy. I don't know if I went over the features of this or what I what it is. This is a 2007 Infinity M45. It is a 4.5 liter V8. It does have some miles on it. it has 179,000 miles on it, but the motor sounds great and it drives good too. I drove it. It actually drives straight, surprisingly. Um, looking at it last night, I did see the frame is bent. It's not serious. I mean, it, yes, when a frame is bent, it is serious, but it's practically the same damage that Ashley's car had. I don't know if I can show it to you, but right there you can see a slight kink in the frame rail, and it veers that way. This one also veers that way. So it pushed the rebar over and took the frame rails with it. Jerry can hook to that, pull it back. It's gonna be no issue. This car has heated air conditioned seats, dual climate control, navigation, sunroof, memory seats, power tilt, power seats, um, <laughs> dual armrests, uh, DVD, it has a DVD ROM drive with, a, with Bluetooth. It has a six disc CD changer. It has XM radio. It has rear wheel steering which i don't know if it works yet and if it does not work i am not fixing it because uh honestly you don't need the rear wheels to steer and it's going to be a very costly fix if that it comes to that probably but that is one of my codes i had i cleared it it hasn't come back yet uh, but we haven't driven it yet so we'll, we'll have to see about that um very roomy very big car sounds really good um but like I said, we're going to have to take this thing out to Jerry's. We're going to have to do a disassembly on the front end, take it apart, get it down to where we can see what we're working with. And uh, I'm hoping I don't have to take the condenser off because the AC works good. Uh, I'd like to not break the system. So if I can just tuck it out of the way, that's going to be my best bet. And uh, the radiator doesn't leak either. So um, we'll get in see what we can fix, what we have to buy to repair this. But that is going to be the end of this episode. Guys, I hope you like this new build and you're as excited for it as I am. Um, it, 
I'm 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 real excited. I I want to drive it. Like I want to drive it now, but like it needs fixed. It has a very good tent job one, which is sad to say because I gotta peel that off for PA inspection. It sucks. But next video, we're gonna start getting some mechanical work done on this. I've been doing lots of work up in the gym, so that's why, like, if you don't see as many videos, I'm trying to finish up there. I, like, I'm down to trim and moving the gym equipment right now, which sucks, and some little touch-up areas. But anyways, guys, if you like this video, go check out some of my other ones. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next episode. Oh, wow.